I'm Pete. I'm Stephanie, and this is The Cool Part Show, our show all about interesting 3D printed parts. Today on the show, the amazing physical properties of this 3D printed cylinder. You know how you pour hot coffee into a thermos? More of a tea drinker, but sure. You pour hot tea into a thermos, and it's hot on the inside, but remains cool to the touch on the outside. This cylinder is like that, but if your beverage of choice was something like 850 degrees Fahrenheit. Additive manufacturing to make a hardware component that has to see extreme thermal cycling on this episode of The Cool Parts Show. Welcome to The Cool Parts Show. This is our show all about interesting, innovative 3D printed parts. If you like what you see, make sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Today we're going to be going into the world of valves again, specifically inside of a valve, to look at this thermal sleeve. This is a component that is designed to protect valve bodies from extreme changes in temperature, um, prevent thermal shock and thermal stress over time. So this sleeve is part of a valve system produced by Volan valve technology specialist based in Montreal. The valve in question is used in oil processing, specifically processing of heavier oil, uh, like maybe with higher bitumen content, higher viscosity oil. The specific process is ebulated bed hydrocracking. And all you need to know about that is it requires the oil to be raised to very high temperature, very high pressure like 850 degrees Fahrenheit, 2500 PSI. And this sleeve waits in ambient temperature and pressure conditions because this sleeve connects to the reactor that that oil is flowing into. So that is the challenge, how to make a, a rugged hardware component that can easily endure that frequent and extreme temperature cycling. And the sleeve is so important because it is actually protecting the valve from the inside out. So its role is to protect the valve from that intense uh, thermal cycling. And so there are a couple of different strategies you could take to, to protect that valve. Um, thermal sleeves like this are pretty common. In other applications, they might be made of pure ceramic, but in eBed, the temperatures are too high. Uh, there's too much risk of cracking. The, the sleeves just wouldn't be durable enough. And so the more common strategy is to take a machined metal sleeve and coat it with a ceramic um, thermal barrier coating or TBC. This is uh, an affordable solution, but maybe not as effective as it could be. Um, and so Volan has come up with this alternative sleeve. Uh, this is a fully 3D printed thermal sleeve body uh, made of Inconel 718. And instead of doing a, a ceramic coating, they've actually filled the walls with a lattice structure that is designed to deliver the thermal properties, the insulating properties that they're after. So complicated problem. Pretty simple solution. This is a single 3D printed piece. But this is not the only potential solution that Volan tried. So to better understand this story, sort of the context of this problem, the significance of this solution, let's back up and, and talk about the different ways that Volan looked at this problem. Here is Luke Verne, Business Development Director with Volan. So AV oil, it's uh, what they call the bottom of the barrel, it's the, the very viscous uh, bitumen. Um, and it's a process that is in high demand today um, because there is less and less light oil available. Uh, and also there is a demand for low, sur low sulfur oil. Uh, and ebulated bed, it's the perfect process to, to achieve that. Unlike other processes, ebulated bed, it's um, very efficient. So the conversion rate of ebulated bed, it's uh, up to 90%, which is very high in, uh, in hydroconversion. What is also special about it, and that's connected to our sleeve, it's the fact that in order to make the process that efficient, they need to inject catalyst inside the reactor every day. And they have to also remove catalyst from the reactor every day. And, and that's where our sleeve will play a role in order to inject the catalyst in the reactor, we have to open valves uh, every day that are at relatively ambient temperature. To inject that new, new catalyst in the reactor, we have to also extract some spent catalyst from the reactor. And that catalyst, which is spent, it's at high temperature and high pressure. And that catalyst needs to flow across the valve that was waiting in standby. So that valve goes from almost ambient temperature, low pressure, to high temperature, high pressure every day. 
when they inject and remove that catalyst. Um, and we have basically developed the sleeve in order to protect those valves from those daily thermal cycle. So Luke is describing kind of the, the cyclical nature of this reaction and what's happening to these valves on a daily basis. And so the issue is not that the valve needs to withstand these high temperatures all the time. It's that it needs to repeatedly withstand these fluctuations. And so the role of the sleeve is to insulate the valve, prevent um, as much of the heat as possible from reaching the valve body, but also to sort of like slow and reduce the severity of those fluctuations in temperature. And so Valon maybe wasn't thinking about 3D printing initially or right away, um, but they understood early on that one way of getting the insulating properties they were after would be through using some sort of labyrinth structure. So we, we talk about two very different techniques. One of them, I don't know if you're familiar with it, it's called a refractory liner. So in our industry, it's very common to install bricks inside pipeline in order to insulate the pipeline from the fluid. And sometimes you have multiple layers of bricks and when that happens, what you do is you, you ensure that the join between the different layers of bricks are not aligned in order to create a kind of labyrinth for the heat. Another technique, what is also commonly used in our business, it's a thermal barrier coating. So those are traditional coatings that are used to, uh, to create insulation. Here also, they are, they are deposited purposely with uh, porosities across the coating. The objective of those porosities is also to create a kind of labyrinth so the heat cannot go through. So obviously there is a big difference of scale between, between the bricks and those thermal spray coatings, but the concept is still the same, is to have a kind of labyrinth. So the labyrinth is amazing. Let's see what I did there. Terrible. <laughs> But there's a real difference in scale. Those bricks are large. The, the thermal spray coating is very small by comparison. This is an additional step that would be added on to uh, a starting component. It's not the way to make a solid cylinder. As the Volan team thought more about this, they realized there is a different way to get to that internal labyrinth that operates on the scale they're looking for. So at some points, we realized that we could create such a structure with 3D printing, the, that, that idea of having that uh, labyrinth concept like. The structure is in between the two because the, 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 the finest you can get with 3D printing is not as fine as you can get with thermal barrier coating, but it's definitely much finer than a brick structure. The big advantage compared to thermal barrier coating is the fact that you can have much thicker structure because thermal barrier coating are, are limited in thickness, which is not the case of 3D printing. So, so you can have a, a very large uh, labyrinth to, to maintain the heat inside. So using additive manufacturing, specifically using laser powder bed fusion, Valan was able to create the right type of labyrinth that they wanted by using lattices inside of the walls of this sleeve. Um, of course, there was a lot of development work, a lot of R&D that went into figuring out just the right lattice, just the right geometries. Uh, and so I want to introduce someone else from Valan who can speak to that. This is Fadila Kelfui. She is a corporate engineer metallurgy for Valan. In our concept, we use a uh, lattice infill structure between the inner and uh, the outer shells of the sleeve. This design effectively creates a monolithic insulation, thermal uh, insulation, by creating the space between the inner and the outer uh, shells of the sleeve, minimizing the heat transfer and uh, preventing the premature thermal fatigue stress Cracking. This is not literally uh, what the geometry looks like inside of the part, but these were steps along the way on the journey that the Volan team took. Internal structures like this, lattice type structures like this inside the part perform a couple of functions. One is they reduce the pathways that heat can travel. And at the same time, this structure limits the peak stress that the valve sees that's connected to this sleeve. But it took a while to get there. It took a while, a lot of experimentation for the Volan team to arrive at exactly the internal geometry that, that suited the requirements they're going for. We considered uh, various uh, lattice geometries, uh, ranging from handicap to um, more complex uh, patterns. 
focusing on manufacturability, uh, maximizing the thermal insulation, minimizing the uh, peak stress induced by thermal shock, and mechanical uh, mechanical integrity of the sleeve. Uh, the design chosen uh, offer an optimal uh, thermal insulation and uh, mechanical integrity of the of the 3D printing sleeve. And based on the validation testing, uh, we uh, chosen the best infrastructure design to maximize the thermal insulation and minimize the uh, peak stress induced by thermal shock. So the 3D, print, uh, 3D printed sleeve was manufactured using uh, laser fusion. Uh, the process uses a, a high uh, power laser to selectively melt and fuse the uh, Equal 718 powder. After uh, uh, printing, the uh, sleeve undergoes um, uh, post-processing. Uh, this includes uh, depowdering, uh, heat treatment to achieve the mechanical properties of the uh, 718, and post-machining to uh, enhance the uh, surface finish and uh, ensure an accurate fit of the sleeve into the valve. So that process that Fadila described delivers uh, a sleeve that meets all of the performance requirements Vilan is looking for, the form and precision, along with the strength and the thermal resilience. And it also provides a process that is uh, simpler than the alternative. So we can't show you the final lattice that they arrived at, um, but it is one that balances those thermal performance needs and uh, manufacturability. Vallon is now in production with these thermal sleeves. The form is 3D printed in one piece as opposed to, say, uh, machining this piece, sending it out for thermal coating, receiving the part back. The additive manufacturing process is um, in production, as you said, about a hundred of these sleeves have now been made and uh, Valan and its customers are getting the performance that they need. So the thermal, uh, the thermal profile indicated that uh, the 3D printing sleeve reduces the thermal profile of the, uh, of the valve uh, by uh, 50% and a peak stress uh, by almost 70%. Compared to the uh, thermal barrier coating uh, sleeve, the 3D printing sleeve uh, reduces the heating rate by uh, about 35%. So today we, we have produced approximately 100 sleeves since the beginning of our journey in that field. And, and we have currently in process around 200, 250 sleeves to make. So total, we are talking about probably 300, 350 sleeves. And we are going from uh, sleeves that are as small as one inch in inside diameter up to uh, six inch inside diameter. All right, I think we got this. All right. Uh, this thermal sleeve is part of a valve system used in oil processing. It is made of Inconel 718. It's made through laser powder bed fusion. Uh, it needs to see uh, very large differences in temperature. It needs to be able to withstand that cyclical loading. And the key to that is an internal lattice structure that provides for that thermal resilience. So that lattice on the interior serves as a labyrinth, making it more difficult for the heat to reach the valve body, protecting the valve from thermal shock and thermal stress over time. Uh, 3D printing allowed them to pack a lot of insulative properties into a fairly small component, um, creating something that works better than coating a machined metal piece just with a ceramic coating. Uh, so 3D printing was able to deliver both the function and the form in this instance. If you're interested in more about the ways 3D printing is changing the possibilities for valve manufacturing, we put links to a lot of resources in the show description, including links to two earlier episodes we've done on 3D printed valve hardware. And if you have a 3D printed part you'd like to see featured on the show, email us. Give us a description, photos, video, whatever you'd like to send. Coolparts at additivemanufacturing.media. Thank you for watching. <laughs>